What's going on my nerds and collectors alike? Today we are taking a look at Star Wars The Black Series Moff Gideon from The Mandalorian TV Show. Getting into the packaging here, you see we have Star Wars The Mandalorian picked out in that brownish kind of orange color. It says Moff Gideon. You've got your warnings for choking hazards. Four and up. Star Wars The Black Series. We've got Moff Gideon here in the packaging with his blaster. The ever-important Darksaber. You can get some of the details in there so you can see his face sculpt is already looking pretty good in that packaging. On this side, just says Star Wars The Black Series and you've got the window. Got another window up at the top. On this side, you've got an image of Moff Gideon with the TIE Fighter swooping over. It says Moff Gideon down here at the bottom. On the back, we've got the same image of Moff Gideon, just a little zoomed in. And it says Moff Gideon. Imperial Moff Gideon is fiercely determined to capture a specific quarry. Clever and formidable, Gideon values power and knowledge. So, you know, as always, getting super descriptive about the character. We see here that he is number 8 in the Mandalorian line. You've got some more warnings. Different languages here. Don't put it in your mouth. No kids under 3. Down here at the bottom, you got your barcodes, legalese, all that fun stuff. So we will go ahead and get this guy cracked open and see what he's about. All right, so here we have Moff Gideon out of the packaging. Getting a closer look here, you can see Mr. Esposito's face sculpt here looks pretty much impeccable. I think Hasbro knocked it out of the park. He's looking really good here. Um, could he use maybe a coat of matte on his face? Because his face is a little bit glossy. Tends to happen with the uh, face printing technology Hasbro uses, but uh, still looking really good there. So you've got some details on his armor here. You can see there's a uh, nice pattern on his belt with a little belt buckle there. He's got a nice gloss coat for the black of his armor. You've got his gloves picked out with padding on the knuckles. And then you've got the paint picked out for his fingers. And that's on both sides. And you've got that same kind of pattern on his glove as that he uh, has on his belt. You've got red picked out on his straps here. His boots are looking pretty good. There's nothing on the bottom. Though he does have peggles at the bottom of his feet. Uh, you've got a nice red line on his pants picked out. Taking the cape off here just for a second. You can see that the red goes all the way around to the belt there. So it meets up on the back. For a simple character design for the show, I still think it looks pretty cool. And uh, his cape does come off. It's just attached with a little rectangular peg there. So I'll go ahead and leave that off for the articulation section here. So Moff Gideon is uh, fairly standard for the Black Series line during uh, for articulation-wise. So he's got a dumbbell up at the top of his head there. Super tiny. It's mostly just a ball joint, but there you go. And then you also have a dumbbell at the bottom of his neck. So all in all, he can look up. Not too, too far, but he's got an upward gaze, so. Not great, but not terrible you can get something going uh down about the same amount so at least you can look down a little bit although for that uh, specific quarry that they were talking about for his bio that may be a little hard to see uh, he also has a little bit of tilt a little bit of tilt not the worst we've seen from the black series but certainly could be better and that's a little disappointing um his arms here just are on a hinge, so they go up about that far. Uh, do you want to be careful with these shoulder pads, seeing as, you know, they're soft material, but they're still glued down there. You don't want to push it too far and have those rip off. After a while, they will just sit back down. Um, there is no butterfly joint on Moff Gideon, so that's a little disappointing to see, but his arms will go 360. He has a single joint at his elbow that goes well past 90, so that's always good. He has a swivel at the elbow, as most of the Black Series figures do. He has a swivel at his wrists, and for this wrist, you have a vertical hinge that goes up and down, 
It's a little limited, but uh, it'll move. And on this side, his wrist is a horizontal hinge, so that goes in and out, which I wish they kind of were both vertical, considering that this hand is also sculpted to hold one of his other accessories, the Darksaber. But uh, I guess you get what you get. He has a diaphragm joint that is well hidden up underneath this armor, which is just a kind of soft overlay glued to the torso piece, so he can crunch that far forward. Gets a pretty good back. And good swivel. Side to sides. Actually a little bit better than the crunch is, it looks like. So that's always good. His tunic here, the bottom of his tunic, there is a small split. So it's split on each side, and the holster's just attached to the tunic, so that'll stay out of the way. Uh, so his legs can go forward. Uh... A little less than 90, I'd say probably 80. They go back decently far. He can kick out about 45, but he's a moth, so I guess he doesn't have to do a lot of kicking. Uh, he does have a thigh swivel, which is decently hidden. It doesn't break up the sculpt too much because it's hidden with the wrinkles, so that's all right. He has the... Single jointed knees, which I know some people aren't happy about, some people are. I'm kind of indifferent about it. Uh, they look pretty good. Obviously kind of seamless. They look better when you're bending them is what Hasbro's going for here. So you get what you get. Uh, you do have a swivel at that knee joint. And then his ankles will go up that far. They are Kind of hindered by the sculpt of his boot there. The little ridges kind of catch on it. We'll go back plenty far though. And we do get ankle pivot. So all in all, he's fairly standard. Doesn't really excel in any, uh, any option here, I suppose. But uh, he's not terrible. Looks really good. And for what the character is, I think it suffices. So for accessories, we get Moff Gideon's blaster here. Got the nice scope picked out on there. You can see the vents for the barrel. So that looks pretty good. Get that, keep that in focus. There's no paint on it. Um, just looks like the plastic's a little bit shiny, but there's no paint there. Oh, dropped it. Oh no. You do have a nice uh, little grip texture molded at the front of his grip right there. So that's pretty good. And he can hold that. Fits in his hand nice and tight. Gets the trigger finger around it. Holds that really well. And you can also store that in the holster that is attached to his tunic. That just slides down in there. You can shake it, doesn't want to fall out, fits pretty snug, so that's very good. And I think the accessory we are more concerned about here is the dark saber, which I like how they made the hilt in the show versus uh, in the Clone Wars. I like the live action hilt a little bit more because it has a more, I guess, reasonable kind of hilt for the dark saber instead of just having a you know sharp angled rectangle which i don't know some people might like the other one better but in my opinion i like this one better and i like the uh grip that we've got down there so that's pretty cool and here's the blade so you can see what they've done is by the peg you can see the blade is molded in a off-white plastic with the black painted over it it's kind of a shimmery black paint. So that looks pretty cool. It would have been nice to have a little bit more white within this black paint, but for a mass-produced dark saber, I like it. Looks pretty good. And that will just plug in there. And there you go. 
Uh, he does not have a place to store the dark saber on him, but we can have him hold it. And his left hand is more of a grip for the dark saber than it is for the pistol. So there he is holding the dark saber. And for those of you who may be curious, Mando can also hold the dark saber, though the grip is a little bit loose, but that could just be mine. In the uh, blaster wielding hand here, I like to just get the guard and wedge it kind of at that uh, trigger finger, and he holds it just fine. You can shake it; he's not going to let it go. On the more open grip here for uh, his rifle support, I didn't have as much luck getting him to hold it, but he definitely looks pretty cool wielding the dark saber and having claim to the seat of Mandalore. So uh, very curious to see how that works out in Mandalorian Season 3, even though we have to wait a full year before we get a new season. And speaking of Mando, here is Moff Gideon compared to Din Djarin the Mandalorian and Grogu, which is the quarry that Moff Gideon has been chasing throughout the series. So I think they scale pretty well together. Uh, Din Djarin's actually looking pretty intimidating next to Moff, about a good half a head taller. And a bit bulkier, so that's pretty good. Grogu fits in there pretty well. Get these guys out of here. Here is Moff Gideon with some of Din Djarin's uh, companions here. We have Cara Dune and the deluxe uh, version of Boba Fett. Boba Fett's actually almost a whole head taller than Moff Gideon is, so he's looking pretty good there. Cara Dune's looking pretty good in her own right, considering uh, she's the one who gets to arrest him. So they're looking pretty good. Let's get them out of here. And here is Moff Gideon with some Imperial Troopers. So we have him with a Scout Trooper. And since I don't have any Dark Troopers or the new Stormtrooper mold, here he is with a Shadow Stormtrooper. Which I think this guy looks a little big. I'm pretty sure the newer Stormtroopers will look plenty better with him. They're kind of more proportionate. But the Scout Trooper looks good, so we'll... uh Get him out of here. And we have Moff Gideon with some other saber wielders. Uh, on the right there, we have the Jedi Fallen Order second sister. So another black and red clad Imperial member there. And the only other saber wielder we really see in the series is Ahsoka Tano on the left. And I know that is the Season 7 Clone Wars version, but we don't really have a version to stand in for the Mandalorian version yet. I know some people use the Rebels version, but her costume in the show was kind of a kit bash between her Season 7 look and the Rebels look. It was a lot darker, had some of the more elements of the Clone Wars version, but still some of the hints of the Rebels version peeking out there too. So I think that looks pretty good together. Ahsoka's only a little bit taller than him because of her headpiece. Second Sister's just a little bit taller because of her helmet, so they're about even in height. They look pretty good together. And getting these guys out of here. So overall, I think the figure looks really good. He's a very important character to have, especially if you're a fan of the Mandalorian uh, series. He's very key and the main villain for most of the series and through all of season two. So he's very important to have. He comes with the Darksaber, which is a very important point to have for the Mandalorian show. Looks really good. The articulation is a bit disappointing. I'm kind of disappointed with some of the range that it has, but considering he's a moth and he doesn't really do a lot of fighting until the end of Season 2, I think it's alright. I still enjoy the figure a lot. Um, I pre-ordered mine from Big Bad Toy Store, shipped in a couple of days, so you guys should have some pretty good luck there. And before we sign off, I just want to say that this channel and all of the content on it are not for viewers under the age of 13 years old. Stay safe, guys. Hope you all have a good one.